Hello everyone, in this video, we'll be talking about how to generate a certificate signing request for VRA, IaaS Web, and the Manager Service. We'll then go to the process of importing a signed certificate. We want to head over to our Certificates tab. Before we get to the process of generating our CSR, our Certificate Signing Request, I want to talk about the Reinitiate Trust button. This is typically used when we have a CERT issue some kind of issue between VRA and IaaS. And what we'd see from a behavior perspective, that it may look like the IaaS service is unregistered. We may also see a repository 401, 404, or 503 error. If we click the button, VRA will push out the certificates again, the existing certificates, all the way through IaaS and redo those IaaS bindings in an attempt to reestablish a trust relationship. If certificates are not working in VRA, then nothing is working because nothing is trusting each other. Jumping back into the steps, we have four different options. We want to focus on the generate signing request. This allows us to generate our CSR. But one of the things it doesn't allow us to do is generate a CSR with SAN. That's our subject alternative names. You may have seen these before. We have the fully qualified domain name in a certificate. We have the short name, where it's just the name of the host. And we have the IP address. That's actually a recommended practice from VMware to make sure we include all three of them. Just in case we use one of them, we already have a certificate that's built around them. Now for VRA itself, it just uses the fully qualified domain name. Adding those SAN entries is a benefit for the client to make sure that when we type in the URL, we don't have to type in the fully qualified domain name. We can type in the short name or IP address and still have a trusted certificate. To generate a certificate with our subject alternative names, we have to do that via command line. I've SSH'd into VRA, and I want to head over to our temp directory. I'm going to create a directory where we can put all our certificates in there. With our search directory created, we now need to create an open SSL configuration file. I'm going to use VI to create a new file called vracerts.cnf, which is configuration. I'm going to press the lowercase i to go into insert mode, and then paste in our configuration file. In the KB article below, it has a copy of this configuration file. Let's quickly walk through the information we populated. First is C, that's for country. We're in the US. Our state is Colorado. Our location is in Broomfield. Our organization is VMware. And we're with the GSS organizational unit. CN is our common name. That's where we put the fully qualified domain name. And then you can see towards the bottom, we have a subject alternative name section. And this is where we can populate that additional information. So I have DNS.1, which is our fully qualified domain name, DNS.2, which is our short name, and then IP.1, which is our IP address. With all that information, I'm gonna press escape, colon, W, Q, to write to this file and quit from this file. If I cat out the file, I can see the contents of our configuration file. At this point, I can now generate a certificate signing request. In the command, we're asking to generate a 2048 cert. We're creating a private key, private.key, using SHA-256. We're using a configuration file that we just created. And we're outputting it to this current directory. Once we press enter, we now have our key. We can take this information to our signing authority to have them sign our certificate. We can also validate to make sure we have the right information in there. We can see our information in the issuer, but really, I wanna take a look at the bottom where I can see the subject alternative name. Is all that information populated correctly? Once we validate it, I'll press Q to quit out of here. Once the certificate's been signed, I wanna start populating this information. I'll click on import, and I'll put in our private key, along with our certificate chain. I'll then click on save. Once we click on save, VRA will do a quick spot check. Did the fully qualified domain name that we entered actually match our appliance? If it didn't, it would kick out an error. It'll then go through the process of pushing that certificate to all the different components inside VRA. And that can take about 30 minutes to fully complete. Once the certificate has been imported, it then goes through the process of revalidating the trust from VRA to IaaS. And so one of the things we want to make sure is that status shows a green check mark once it's complete. At this point, we've replaced the VRA certificate. We can now continue on to IaaS Web. The process is absolutely identical. If you want to use the GUI without our subject alternative names, we could use the GUI, or we could jump back into command line and continue the process. 
And again, VMware recommends using the SAN method to make sure our users don't run into any certificate errors. This particular environment is a simple deployment. It's not a distributed environment. When we click on our manager service, we can see that there's actually no actions. But if this was a distributed environment, we'd also have the opportunity to replace the certificate for our manager service. To wrap up this video, we talked about two different methods to generate a certificate signing request, using the GUI and using command line, and using the command line to generate a certificate with our subject alternative names. We then finished up by importing the certificates into VRA. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope it's been informative.